Hello lovelies. Today we're going to talk about how to read a sputter pattern and a chart. Um, I am using this pattern which is Rhapsody and Cables by Hoey Locatelli. This is a pay pattern and it is available on Ravelry. It also is the pattern that we are using for this month's knit along. Um, now when you open up inside you'll see there are many sizes. This whole string of numbers. These are all different sizes. So for this pattern, she has a note somewhere that this pattern is written to have eight to 10 inches of positive ease. See, recommended ease, eight to 10 inches. So that means that is eight to 10 inches of fabric bigger than you. Uh, the best way to determine what size you wanna make for any garment is to measure a garment that you already own uh, where you like the fit of how it fits on you rather than necessarily measuring your body. Uh, oftentimes finished garment sizes will be a little more accurate to the fit of the garment that you're going to make than just measuring your body. So for this pattern, since the body is wide, but it looks like the sleeves stay at a regular size fit, I went by the sleeve size and for me, that was one, two, three, four sizes in. So that meant my sleeve was to be 14 inches here around the upper arm, which means the body of my sweater from all the circumference around would be one, two, three, four, 52 inches around. Now my body is not 52 inches around. My body would be eight to 10 inches smaller than this 52 inches around which I confirmed when I measured a sweater that I already owned and liked the fit of at home. So now I have my size determined here. I can cross off the numbers that no longer pertain to me. And one, two, three, four. So this is the fourth size in. So then I'll just cross off this what the sizes up here that also do not pertain to me. So then that means as you go through the sweater, as you go through the pattern, one, two, three, four, you're gonna count one, two, three, four, and cross off the numbers that don't pertain to you, if perchance you're making the same size I am. You'll see over here throughout the pattern, you get lots of these number strings. So you'll count one, two, three, four, circle the one that is for you, and you can strike through the ones that do not. As you can see, this makes it easier to determine one, two, three, four, which direction you are meant to follow. And you would do this throughout the entire pattern. So you'll see these strings of numbers come up again. One, two, three, four. So you do this all the way through. We don't need to do this all the way through on the video, but you understand that when you're at home, you would do this all the way through at home. Now this being a pay pattern, um, this is really well written. I usually prefer pay patterns because they tend to be um, put through more paces often than a free pattern. So that means you're gonna have uh, better schematics, more time has gone into the writing of the pattern, oftentimes, not all the time. Um, but also they tend to be test knitted more, rigorous, more rigorously than a free pattern might be. But then again, it depends from pattern to pattern. Sometimes designer will put a lot of time and effort into making a free pattern uh, you know, to benefit some issue or some such. So here we go. So you see there's schematics that show where you are on the pattern, what part of the sweater you are currently making. You can see this one has a very interesting construction. Also, it's full of cables and lace. And this cable and lace pattern happens more than one time. So where is the cable and lace pattern in here? Well, what Hoey Locatelli has done is we have cable charts. So she's provided us with cable charts each chart has a legend to help explain what all the different crazy symbols mean. I understand when looking at knitting charts, a lot of you may get confused and say, this just looks like hieroglyph. I don't understand any of this. How am I supposed to determine what I am to be doing on which row? What does this mean? Well, we're gonna try to answer those questions. You'll see on this pattern, on this chart, there are numbers right here underneath of row one. And they start over here on the right with number one, and they go all the way across to number 57. So whether you are repeating the chart once, twice, or three times across your knitting, you will repeat from number one, 
to number 57, unless of course the instructions say otherwise elsewhere. Now also you see on this chart, on the right hand side of the chart, you have odd numbers, one, three, five, seven. These are the numbers for each row. And the odd numbers are on the right side of the chart because you read knitting chart and the direction that you knit, which is from right to the left because you are knitting the stitches from the left hand needle onto your right hand needle. Whether you knit continental or whether you knit English, the knitting still follows those same directions. Now you'll see even numbers on the left side of your chart. Now that indicates that the even numbered rows begin on the left side of the chart and then you would follow the instruction all the way across to the right side. Now this is because this chart is meant for a piece of knitting that is knitted flat, which means you knit the right side, the side that will be seen by the outside world, on one row and then you would turn the knitting around and then you'll knit across the inside of the work or the wrong side on the even numbered rows. Now what are you supposed to do in each one of these blocks? So you see we've got blank ones, ones with dashes, ones that have slashes and dashes, and we have this chart over here. Now if you're just looking at this, from far away it doesn't make a whole lot of sense and it's hard to comprehend what is supposed to happen with your knitting. I enjoy following a chart because they give me a picture of what the knitting is going to look like. Now, to make this easier to look at, you may consider color coding your chart. That's what I do with mine. So we'll pick a symbol. So we'll pick this one, C3PB. What does that mean? Well, she says it means slip one onto a cable needle and hold to the back. Then you're gonna knit two stitches and then you're gonna purl the stitch from the cable needle. So, and it looks like it leans to the right. So this is a right leaning dash, a right leaning slash, with a little dash. That is for the purl because up here it says this means purl on the right side and knit on the wrong side. See some of these symbols have directions for the right side and they also have directions for the wrong side. So we're going to color in this special one, the C3PB, to make it stand out. So say we'll make it purple. So that means we're going to go through the chart and every time we see this we're going to make it purple. You can see it's already starting to make the symbol stand out to give you an idea of what the knitting is going to look like after you knit it. You see? Already makes it stand out. Now I have a completed chart here. This is the one that I've colored for myself. See what a big difference this makes? You can actually see what's happening. Now you notice I didn't color in every square. I did the special symbols to make those stand out. So you can see the contrast. Which one would you rather look at? Now to keep track of where you are on this chart, what I like to do is I like to slip my charts into one of these clear plastic page protectors and then I can cross off the rows as I complete them with a dry erase marker. So you can see here that I'm doing something in the pattern where I am doing rows of cable A and I have to keep track of how many times I do repeats over here. So, because I'm gonna decrease on some row. I encourage writing on your charts and doing anything that's gonna make them easier for you to follow and understand. Uh, I like the dry erase markers because then when you are done and you need to go back to the beginning, you can go ahead and wipe them clean and you can go back to the beginning and have a clean slate. Now, I also understand some of you prefer to follow line by line directions or charts are not useful to you. Well, we are in luck because Hoi Locatelli has also included in her pattern line by line instructions for each of these charts. So here, panel A, 57 stitches. These 16 rows, these are the line by line instructions for the chart which makes up panel A. Now what I would recommend doing to make this easier for you to read is you can on an index card write the instruction for each of these rows 
And see, there's lots of abbreviations here. You can also color code either this paper or your index cards uh, to make these rows even easier for you to read and understand. So here's our C3PB. We made this purple, so we can make this purple here. And then also she has an abbreviation list up at the top. So you say, okay, so this is purple here, so we'll make this purple here. So when we come across purple, as we go through these instructions, you can say, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do here. Now, if you have written each of these 16 rows as an, on an index card, then you can punch a hole in the corner of all of the cards and clip them together on a jump loop. So when you've completed each row, you flip the card and you might want to clip it together with a bullnose clip and you can tell then easily what row you are on. Uh, again, anything that makes these charts and instructions easier for you to read is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, there are lots of different techniques that people use to keep track. Some people use a clicking row counter. Some people use a turning row counter. Whatever, some people like to make hash marks on their paper, like I do. Uh, whatever works for you. I wholeheartedly recommend you go forth and try. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always contact us at lovelyyarns at gmail.com. It's L-O-V-E-L-Y-A-R-N-S at gmail.com. You can visit our website, lovelyyarns.com, and you can call us at 410-662-9276. Thanks for watching today, and if you enjoyed this video and our other videos, please like and subscribe. Thanks very much. Happy stitching.